The clerk will read the caption to House Bill 291, House Bill 291. House Bill 291 by Representative Knight of the 130th to amend Title 43, the official code of Georgia annotated relating to professions and businesses so as to provide that the State Board of Accountancy is an independent state agency attached to the Secretary of State for administrative purposes only. This bill having come before the Committee on Judiciary, the Committee recommends the same due pass by Committee Substitute and be read for the third time. Chair recognizes Chairman Knight to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the House, I come before you with House Bill 291. Uh, you've uh, probably remember hearing this over the last two sessions. Uh, this is a bill that is moving the State Board of Accountancy from the Secretary of State's office uh, to the State Accounting Office. First of all, let me tell you a few things of what this bill does and then, then why it's so important. Um, again, the heart of this bill is simply creating a more effective state board by placing it under the authority of the State Accounting Office. The State Accounting Office is a CPA, understands the profession, and what the operational and regulatory perspective should be in, in, in order to ensure the proper oversight of our accounting profession. Um, it provides the authority uh, for the state accounting officer to hire an executive director who's responsible to the board and the supporting staff need, uh, needed to make sure that they're properly uh, carrying out the functions of the State Board of Accountancy. Uh, and, and then also it allows the, the board to make sure that the appropriate operations and procedures are in place such that we can make sure that proper oversight is being done, especially uh, when it comes to uh, the complaints uh, that come in. And I want to say this. When I, members of the state board, met with Governor Dill almost two years ago, there were approximately 200 complaints that were going back to 2008. 200 complaints going back to 2008. Now let me tell you why this, this bill is so important. One, the CPA profession is the only profession that has the accountability to third parties, and again, to third parties, uh, as well as the general public. You see, everybody, almost everybody in business is dependent upon the audited financial statements that our profession produces that goes out for the third party, from banking, investing, financial planning, lending, government, all of those financial statements and that attestation function is provided to us so that all of these third parties are relying on that data to be independent, to correct, uh, and, and above board. Uh, second of all, um, uh, it, it, our, our last part of the reason is, is Georgia is, is, is a state that's number one in business. We're regarded as the weakest state board of accountancy in the nation. I repeat, we are regarded as the weakest state board of accountancy in the nation. And again, what we're doing is seeking to move this, move it into a, a, a state accounting office where that we can make sure that we've got dedicated people who understand the profession and make sure that we're doing the right thing. I'm not going to go over the whole bill. It's, it's very long, but I will touch on a few sections and then, then open up for some questions. First of all, I want to thank uh, Chairman Jay Powell and his subcommittee for the work over the interim and judiciary. Um, this bill was heard four times uh, and went through many revisions and, and, and leg counsel. And I want to appreciate their hard work and all of the vetting that this bill went through. Um, basically, the bill, if you look at I'm going to go with what really is the new part of this bill. The rest of it are sort of changes as we're moving language around. Obviously, lines one through seven addresses the intent of the act and provides for the State Board of Accountancy that's being transferred administratively and attached uh, to the State Accounting Office. Um, 121, uh, there's some uh, added definition regarding the State Accounting Office, State Accounting Officer, that's new, that's because we're housing it in, in the uh, uh, State Accounting Office. Um, 124, uh, that area we're looking at um, the, language that provides for the transition as this moves over. 
Uh, it covers the members of their terms and it covers the jurisdiction uh, and the venue of meetings since we are changing this to the uh, uh, state accounting office. One, or two, I'm sorry, 219. This is an important section. This is creating the new duties of an executive director. This is a completely new section and it, it goes over the record keeping, the employing, the pre preparation, maintaining a public roster. If you go to line 700 in that area, this, this uh, outlines the investigations and the executive director to conduct the investigations, the subpoena power to the executive director, and the investigation results being reported uh, to the board. Um, and we took this from the existing code and the real estate uh, commission model. So this is not new. We just simply pulled what the real estate uh, commission was doing. 881. This, uh, the, the new part here covers the penalties. Uh, we've moved from 500 to 5,000. That's the maximum that could be uh, assessed by the board for penalties. Um, and then finally, uh, Going to line 12, 27, 12, 30. Uh, this is the uh, state accounting officer appointing an executive director uh, to uh, the state board. These are, that's really what's new inside the bill. The rest of it, unfortunately, I got caught up with uh, trying to correct decades of, of uh, as you know, code session gets pieced together and changes over time. The rest of it was updating definitions, making sure it flowed properly. Uh, and, uh, and with that, I, uh, I would respectfully ask for your favorable consideration. This is very, very important to uh, the profession here, and, uh, and I want to make sure that we recognize we have several CPAs that are part of our body, um, and, uh, you know, David Wilkinson, Howard Mosby, B.J. Pack, he's a, I guess, a former CPA. I don't know if he's still licensed here, but he is, he's a CPA. John Carson, myself, um, you know, it's very important, and uh, we, we really appreciate the support that you could uh, give to this bill. Mr. Speaker, if there are no questions, I will ask for the favorable consideration of House Bill 291, and uh, with that, I'll uh, yield the well. If there are no you, questions. Um, you, you, you. You drew some interest here, Mr. Chairman. I know this is not your first bill. <laughs> do you yield for questions? I, I do, Mr. Speaker. Let's see. Uh, got a chairman here. Uh, uh, chair recognizes Chairman Maxwell to your right for a question. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman Yeo. Yes, sir. A, a couple of questions, if you don't mind. I'm, just, just trying to understand a few things here. One time I read something that was going to stay attached to the Secretary of State's office, but I see y'all are completely coming out from under their office now. Is that correct? That, that is the purpose of the bill. Okay. Uh, fees. Are, are you guys going to be able to self-fund anything that's going on now? Are y'all having to raise your fees for the accountancy well, board? Well, we're currently, um, um, you know, that's a great question. We're prepared to, to, as a professional, raise our fees if we have to. But I will I'll remind and I'll point to the body that in the code section that fees, uh, if you go to line 252, fees shall be reasonable and determined in such a manner that the total amount of fees charged by the board shall approximate the total of the direct and indirect costs for the operation of the board. So, you know, should, should the board functions, uh, you know, uh, improve and we get more there yes our, our body is certainly willing to to do that currently we pay fifty dollars uh, every two years and I think uh, the state board the Secretary of State's putting about eleven dollars back into yeah. uh, basically all he's doing is renewing our fees yeah, I know we had a couple of pieces of legislation last year taking people out they had yeah. to raise their fees I think fairly significant to uh, pay the difference on yeah. what they're and going to be doing. Another thing is is we're actually uh, contracting a lot of stuff that other states are doing with their Secretary of State. Our members are paying for it outside of this, uh, you know, initial application for testing and things like that. And that data is just getting sent back once it's okay. really completed, you know, to the Secretary of State simply to enter. So we're, we're paying a lot more outside of the Secretary of State for these functions okay. simply and because those are not being 
or were not being done by our Secretary of State, and we were forced to go elsewhere. And one other question, if the gentleman yield. Yes. The, the uh, oh, good gracious, just left my mind right here. The, when, when you uh, investigate these people that uh, you, you've got charges brought up on, what's the enforcement provision? Is that going to be through your? Uh, the enforcement provisions are, are just, as I had mentioned, it's the same as a real estate. We actually copied what the real estate commission was okay. uh, as far as the uh, investigative I, process. And um, the enforcement of yeah, uh, yes. the lawbreakers. Yeah. Thanks, sir. Mr. Speaker, any? Do you further yield? I'll yield for one or two more, Mr. Speaker. And the chair recognizes Representative Mosby to your left for a question. Does the gentleman yield? Yes, to my fellow CPA, yes, sir. Great bill, great bill. Um, so, <laughs> isn't it true that many, most of all of the businesses in this state and financial institutions rely on the attestation of CPAs, making sure that those financial statements accurately represent uh, the financial position of those organizations? You, you are indeed correct, sir. This bill will do nothing but help us ensure that those CPAs out there make, making sure that they comply with those rules promulgated by our profession. That is correct. You're, you're, you're absolutely correct. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, if there are no other questions, I'll uh, ask for the favorable consideration and, and yield the well. Gentlemen has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 291 will vote aye. All those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. <clears throat> Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 291. The ayes are 150, the nays are 25. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed.